Hello, my name is Dr. Tom Waldman, and I'm a senior lecturer in the Department of Security Studies and Criminology at Macquarie University. I'm also the course director of the Bachelor of Security Studies. Security Studies is a unique and exciting field of study. You will be addressing some of the core issues of global relevance today, whether it's the rise of China, big questions about war and peace in the international system, new forms of terrorism, or evolving cyber threats. Just to provide a quick bit of background to security studies. Security studies really evolved during the Cold War, and most of the focus was on major war and nuclear deterrence. But since that time, there has been an expansion and diversification of the subject into new non-traditional areas and involving critical perspectives. There are a diverse range of challenges today in this complex and globalized world we live in. This requires new thinking, new innovative approaches and informed experts. So what will you study in the Bachelor of Security Studies? Well, you will engage with traditional theories of security, and then you will develop thinking around national security policy, regional strategic issues in the Indo-Pacific and in Australia's near abroad, modern warfare, which is my area of specialism, intelligence, counter-terrorism, cybersecurity, issues of national resilience and crisis management, political violence, such as civil war and internal unrest, and also ethical issues to do with security. What skills will you develop during the BSS? Well, in this day and age, we require critical thinkers, people who can think laterally and think in new and innovative ways. That requires in-depth analytical skills, and we endeavor to give you those skills. Also, it's vital that you have policy evaluation skills, being able to measure up different policies and provide evidence-based solutions for policymakers. Students will also learn how to communicate effectively and confidently for a range of different audiences in both the policy and private sectors. You can choose to take the BSS as a standalone course or combine it with any other degree across the university as long as you meet the prerequisites. This can be a really attractive option, especially considering what employers are looking for, and in particular given the synergies between various subjects such as political science, law, business, and so forth. As you can see here, there are a variety of popular combinations with international studies, business analytics, and with law. In terms of the degree structure, you will take 16 core units and these are divided into five, five, six across your three years. Plus, you'll be able to take eight flexible zone units from across the university. In the first year, you will be provided with the basic theoretical, conceptual, and historical foundations of the subject. And then on into the second and third year, you will develop more specialized knowledge around four core streams, of terrorism, cyber, intelligence, and strategy. Plus, there are three dedicated units in crisis management, current and emerging issues, and your PACE unit that I'll come on to in a moment. There is also the option to combine your bachelor's degree with the master's, and you can complete the BSS and a master's degree in just four years, and this can be a really attractive option to pursue. You can find out more about this on the website or ask questions later. So how will you be taught? Well, we have a diverse range of staff in the department. We have academics of international standing and also practitioners and policy makers. That provides you with a diverse range of perspectives. It has the academic credibility and also the real world experience. Beyond the traditional interactive lectures and small group discussions, there are a range of methods that will be utilized such as role play, simulation, and various other forms of active learning exercises. During the course, you will be exposed to various methodologies and tools that are actually used in the industry today. Also, you'll be tested on this knowledge in a variety of different assessments, whether it's the classical essay or more varied assessments, such as quizzes 
and group assessments. Building on the practice-oriented approach of the BSS, all students will have the opportunity to take part in Macquarie's multi-award winning PACE programme. This programme will allow you to work alongside partner organisations. Working with a mentor from these organisations, you will work on a project with teammates, often directly informing the practices of that organisation. We have had students who have worked with the Counterterrorism and Special Tactics Command of New South Wales Police Force, as well as the Australian Red Cross and many other types of organisation. Given the global scope of the security field, it can be a really good thing to spend some time abroad during your degree. This is something we really encourage at Macquarie. There are a range of options to allow you to do this. You might apply for a prestigious government scholarship. This will cover your fees, airfare and living expenses to study at one of the top universities in dynamic parts of the Asia Pacific. We've had students who have gone to Nanyang Technological University in Singapore, the National Taiwan University in Taiwan and Mahidol University in Thailand. Beyond that, there are also a range of options in terms of short term or full semester exchange opportunities with over 200 universities around the world. So if you take the BSS, what might your future career be? Well, there are a range of options in both the public, private and non-profit sectors. You might take up a civil service grad scheme in government or work for the intelligence and defense agencies. In the corporate sector, there is growing demand for digital forensics and risk analysis. In the non-profit sector, you might work for a UN agency or a think tank. You perhaps might even go into academia. You might end up in any number of roles, whether it's a policy advisor, a military officer, or a cybersecurity consultant. And what are some of our grads doing now? Well, they have gone on to a range of exciting careers. We've had students who have entered into grad schemes in Qantas or Deloitte. We've had students that have joined think tanks such as China Matters. Many of our students also go on to study postgraduate degrees, either at Macquarie or elsewhere. Our master's degrees are designed especially to lead on from the Bachelor of Security Studies, so you can pursue your area of interest, whether it's criminology, cyber, intelligence or strategic studies. Looking forward, security studies will only grow in importance for governments and societies. Amidst a new era of global uncertainty and technological change, new answers will be required to fundamental security questions, both public and private sectors, in Australia and overseas. Policymakers are preoccupied with thinking about what the rise of China means for international security. There are unanswered questions around the increasing role of technology in augmenting or even replacing the role of humans in the security field. In this environment, security studies will play a critical role in helping societies to understand these issues and devise responses equipped with new conceptual tools, detailed empirical insights and creative evidence-based responses. We hope that you'll come and join us in this dynamic and exciting field of study. Please do stick around now if you would like any of your questions answered. Hi and welcome to the Security Intelligence and Criminology Studio. My name is Jacqueline, or J like the letter, and I'm in my third year of a double degree of Law and Security Studies. With me this morning is Dr. Julian Drugan, who's going to be answering some of your questions about security studies. But before we get on to that, Dr. Drugan, would you like to introduce yourself to the students and give them just a recap as to what you've done in your career and what your role is at Macquarie Uni? Thank you very much, Jay. I'd love to. Uh, and welcome to all of you, wherever you might be. I'm a, uh, an academic at Macquarie University. I'm in the Department of Security Studies and Criminology where I lead a series of projects looking at terrorism in the modern world and how we can uh, counter terrorism. Uh, I've done a lot of work for government and for others through my career in counter terrorism. Uh, I've done it all over the world, in the Middle East, in South Asia, in Southeast Asia. Uh, and I'm also the editor in chief of an international journal called the Journal for Policing, Intelligence and Counterterrorism. Such a fascinating career. Thank you so much for speaking to us today. I'm sure you guys will get heaps out of this conversation, so stay tuned. If you do have any questions that you'd like 
to ask us, feel free to put those in the live Q&A chat function just off to the side of the video and we'll answer those for you. So to get started, we do have a question. What are our undergraduate degree options if you're interested in pursuing a career in security studies? Well, we're one of the only universities in Australia that actually has a full undergraduate program in security studies, and it's called the Bachelor of Security Studies. And that's a program that combines an interest in all these elements of international security. Uh, as you've all seen, we live in a world that's increasingly insecure, it seems, with global health pandemics. Uh, we have uh, state rivalry in our part of the world, the growth of new powers, uh, we have the potential for conflict in various areas. We have cyber security. Mm. Uh, problems with terrorism yeah. uh, and the undergraduate Bachelor of Security Studies really focuses on all of those international issues um, with a very practical focus on, on what are they, why are they happening, what can we do about them. Yeah, so we definitely have a really good option with the Bachelor of Security Studies, which is what I currently study now and I can definitely speak from experience that it's a really fascinating degree and it's meant that I've been able to combine that with law and narrow my area of speciality into what Dr. Drugan was just mentioning, and I really enjoy it. So I hope you guys do some research up on it and see if it's what you like as well. As for postgraduate, do we have any postgraduate options if students wanted to continue their studies beyond undergraduate? We do. We have probably the largest range of tailored, specialised postgraduate programs in the realm of international security, and they're, they're very specific. So we have programs in intelligence, mm -hmm. how to become an intelligence analyst, we have a postgraduate uh, Masters of Counterterrorism Studies. Uh, we have a Masters of uh, Cyber Security, which is, of course, an enormously growing area at the moment, mm -hmm. uh, as we all know. Mm. Uh, we also have an Intelligence of Criminology, um, and we also have a, uh, a Masters of uh, International Security Studies, more generally, that uh, focuses on all of them together. Yeah, so there's definitely some options for you if you did want to pursue your studies into postgraduate. Um, as for what the students will be learning at uni, I've had this question quite a few times where they've said the degrees sound really interesting and we really want to learn about those areas, but what are the jobs that come from these degrees? Would you, just from your experience, be able to give them just an idea as to what careers they could pursue from doing these degrees? Absolutely. So it's, it's one of the real pleasures of being an academic uh, and working with students to see the sorts of places that they go and, mm. and where they end up. And, and I've been able to see students go into lots of different fields. Um, we sort of break them down really into, into the public sector, which is government, basically, uh, and also the private sector, which is business. And mm. we get um, large numbers of students getting jobs in both of those areas. A lot of students might come to security studies as undergrads, um, focusing on government, wanting to work uh, in intelligence or as spies or to work in mm. Australian Federal Police or to work for our Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade uh, as diplomats or something like that. And we certainly do get students who, who go into those areas um, and it's quite a large sector. Uh, but we also get students who go into business and, and mm. end up working for the big consultancy firms or they work for banks or airlines or large multinationals that have a, a global presence and are concerned, yeah. of course, about dealing with risk uh, and potential uh, risks that come out of international security um, and, and sort of working uh, in intelligence functions in that area. Yeah, I think that distinction between public and private sector is really helpful because I remember when I first started my degree, a lot of my friends would ask me, oh, you're doing security studies, you must want to be a spy. And I'd always struggle with how to respond to that question because I didn't know how to distinguish between the two main industries. So I think public and private sector is a really good way to, to start your research into what you could be doing with these degrees. So. Yeah, thank you for expanding on that point. And of course, if you do want to become a spy, the last thing you can say is that you want to become a spy. That's true. But some of our students do go into those sorts of areas. Um, mm. But the other area that, that I didn't mention, which is, I guess, the third area, mm. is the NGO area. Of course, and, yeah. And uh, one of the really nice things is, is traveling parts of the world and visiting former students who are working uh, for people like the Red Cross or the WHO. Um, just last year I was in Lebanon with some of my former students who were working in the refugee camps there wow. for the Syrian refugees doing great work and really yeah. important humanitarian work as well. Yeah, that's really fascinating. So there is that option for you guys too if you did want to pursue that. Um, we do have another question coming in about postgraduate degree options. So the students are concerned, are there any prerequisites for postgraduate and likewise if there's any prerequisites for undergraduate. So would you mind taking us through each of those? Absolutely. Cool. So for the undergraduate, the prerequisite is the, is the ATAR score or the yeah. score you get out of high school and you can have a look online what that is. 
Um, for postgraduate, we tend to open it up as, as widely as we can for students because we consider international security studies to be very multidisciplinary, mm. which means you don't have to have studied international relations or politics as an undergrad to go into those postgraduate programs. Um, however, if you have studied those sorts of things, um, international relations or something like politics, then you uh, can get a shorter program, um, maybe one year rather than a year and a half. Uh, and also if you have work experience, so often people in our postgraduate programs are already working uh, either in government or the private sector yeah. in security related roles. Um, and that track record, that background can also help them uh, come in at a uh, shorter time period for the master's degree uh, than those who don't have those. Yeah. So for the students who are worried, do I do a postgraduate or do I just do the undergraduate? Is it essential for you to do a postgraduate degree or, or is it okay to stick with the undergraduate? No, employers, employers in the international security sort of arena are really happy to employ people directly out of undergraduate programs because as much as we teach you at university, um, and it's very important what we teach you and give you the qualifications, they're looking for um, graduates who are highly intelligent, have a great track record at university, have absorbed lots of new skills and, and um, um, attributes and, and ways of doing things, but are also young and open to uh, learn on the job and to learn all the things that go with, say, working in DFAT or yeah. working for, I don't know, KPMG or whatever it might be. So out of uh, out of undergrad is actually a, a really um, a really useful place to enter into the workforce because they're looking for young people who are um, able to acquire these new skills. Yeah, so you do have both options, which is great. And it just, as Dr. Drugan said, it depends if you did want to pursue the postgraduate, but if you were only looking at doing an undergraduate degree at the moment, um, you, can, you can pursue that option. Um, as for employability, you did mention that beforehand. Some of our students are a bit worried. How does Macquarie try, let me rephrase my question. How does Macquarie ensure that their graduates are employable as possible? And how does that compare, I guess, to the overall? graduate market. Yeah, it's about flexibility and practicability as well. Yeah. So flexibility in that our programs are open and flexible, as I just said, so that when you come out of the undergraduate program, you're able to go into a, a work environment and learn new skills that lay on top of what you've been given as a foundation of Macquarie. So we keep it very broad and flexible, what we, what we teach you in terms of the content around mm. international security. Um, but then we also have a series of practical skills. Um, which we try to embed in our graduates so that they're able to operate within uh, the workforce yep. um, and not just within the uh, the academic classroom. So, you know, we are academics, we are researchers, we all do our own work uh, while we teach, um, but we're not trying to necessarily turn you into academics. What we try to do with our students is give them skills that allow them to operate. So it might be uh, learning how to do simulations, simulation mm -hmm. exercises, um, learning how to do things like risk assessment and, and risk management uh, exercises. Um, we might do red teaming uh, games, which are very mm -hmm. popular in intelligence. Yeah. Sort of cat and mouse type games where you try to find out what your opponent is doing and, and counter them. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also have a lot of lecturers and academics who have also been professionals in these areas. You know, they've worked for um, international affairs or they've worked for police or they've worked in the defence forces. And so um, they bring those skills with them to the classroom so that you're also able to, to gain those sorts of abilities yeah. um, as you learn. Yeah, I can definitely testify to that. I have had to do a red teaming exercise in one of my um, undergraduate subjects. I personally really enjoyed that because when I came into uni, I thought the only types of assignments I would be doing would be essays and you know, similar ones to that. And of course, you do need to learn those skills and I do those in all of my subjects, but the red teaming exercise was very different. And a practical explanation of how that works was we had half the classroom was the adversaries and half the classroom was the security experts. We were given a scenario and were told, predict what the other side is going to do and see what the best solution to that problem would be. And as a student doing undergraduate, I found that really fascinating because I didn't know how my job would look in the future when I hopefully eventually move into that industry. So yeah, I think Macquarie is really great at giving you some interesting assignments and exams where you can practice those real world skills. Yeah, and yeah. they're the skills that of course, um, you know, one of the things that intelligence agencies do themselves when yeah. they're trying to think, uh, you know, what terrorists might do next or yeah. whatever it might be. Yeah, and another question we've been getting quite frequently, 
is what are the internship opportunities that Macquarie tries to give its students so that they can get this real world career experience? Absolutely. So for postgraduates, we have a, a whole unit called the internship unit and uh, any of our postgraduate students can apply to do that particular unit. And we have a whole series of different partners um, who we work with who come out of, again, government and, and these other areas um, who take our students for a semester um, into the workplace, teach them skills, mm -hmm. give them a project, uh, and then they come back and they get credit for doing that uh, as part of their program. For undergraduate students, um, because we have larger numbers, mm -hmm. it's not practical to have that internship program yep. um, where they go out. So instead what we do is we actually bring the companies in to the campus mm -hmm. and at the end of their uh, Bachelor of Security Studies program, uh, we bring in these experts from um, from government, from international organisations, from business, and they actually mentor teams of students uh, in exercises that are similar to sort of simulation type mm. exercises. And so they still get that, that interface, that ability to network uh, with the people who are out there doing things on the yeah. ground, um, but they're still doing it in the classroom and getting credit for it. Yeah, I think that's great. I really like Macquarie because I didn't realise this when I first started my degree, but for every undergraduate degree that Macquarie has, we have what's called a professional and community engagement unit, which is where you do get to work with these industry partners that Macquarie has and learn what it's like to be in the real world and to yeah, work in the security studies related job. So I'm really excited for that personally. What sort of internships have you seen students do when they have done these PACE units? Oh, okay, so we've got internships working with uh, some of the Australian intelligence um, areas. Mm. Uh, we have internships that have operated with Australian police forces. Uh, we have internships operating with groups like the Red Cross. Uh, we have internships with uh, some of the big consultancy organisations like Ernest and & Young and, uh, and so on. We've also had internships uh, with different state and also federal government departments. Right. And often when students are looking for, for jobs, they always think of the federal departments, you mm. know, DFAT or, um, you know, Treasury or something like that. But of course, uh, New South Wales as a state and also the other states in Australia have these departments. And so our students have gone to those departments as well mm. to get uh, internship experience. Um, but really the sky's the limit. I mean, over, over the last few years, we've had students working in virtually every domain in the area as interns. Mm. Um, we also have students now um, who have graduated who are now out there in the field. So we have a large alumni network uh, who are out there in Australia and indeed around the world working in this space, yeah. um, and which is, which is a really great um, network to be able to tap into. It sounds really interesting. I love my degree. I'm so happy I chose Bachelor of Security Studies. <laughs> I did have another question just come in. A few students are confused between the differences between security studies and cybersecurity, because mm -hmm. you have touched on cybersecurity as being a domain within security studies. Absolutely. So how do you differentiate the two between students who are trying to figure out which degree to do? So security studies is very is, is broad, as I said. It looks at international security and threats to global peace and threats to our security in Australia. So it can be everything from military conflict um, all the way down to, to pandemic response, mm. down to, uh, to law and order and, and, and law enforcement and stuff like that. Um, it's very broad. But cybersecurity is a sort of a narrower focus looking at the cyber domain. And so what we do at Macquarie University is we have a series of programs that train people to become cybersecurity experts. Um, and they can either do that through computer programming and actually become uh, experts in mm. putting up defenses against cyber attack. Yeah. Uh, or they can do a strategic uh, cybersecurity program where they understand the strategic lay of the land yeah. um, and how to orient oneself and operate in the 21st century in the context of what the, the threats are coming from cyber domains. Mm. And these threats, of course, you know, happen with governments. We have government to government cyber espionage and cyber warfare and, you know, the hacking of elections and so yeah. on. But also, again, in the private sector, you know, businesses and companies are constantly under cyber um, attack uh, by governments, states and non-state organisations. And so it's an enormous area and it's growing extraordinarily rapidly. Um, and there's a huge amount of hunger and demand out there for people who are knowledgeable about and expert in um, cybersecurity issues. Yeah. It's so a good distinction. Take, uh, keep, keep note or keep in mind that distinction when you're looking at the Bachelor of Security Studies and the Bachelor of Cybersecurity because they are very different and they will streamline you into two slightly different areas. So I think having a look at all the resources we have on the web page you're currently on will be really helpful for that. We did have another question come in, which is what do assessments for the Bachelor of Security Studies look like? 
So we've already sort of touched on this one, but just to reiterate to the students who are confused. Absolutely. Well, they're, they're very diverse again. So there's not just one or two different types of assessments. It can be everything from um, writing a, a standard essay, uh, which is the basis of most university assessments, to doing quizzes and so on. What we don't do is exams. So we don't do sit down exams in the Bachelor of Security Studies or in our postgraduate programs. Um, instead, what we do is, is take home assignments of some sort or another. Now, a lot of those assignments are not your usual academic assignments. So we do have essays and things like that, presentations, but we also often ask our students to do things like, um, as you said before, you know, engage in activities like red teaming activities, or it might be writing professional briefings. Um, in case you had to one day work in an environment where you had to take really complex knowledge about, say, a battlefield or yeah. an international incident and, you know, reduce it down and distill it down to a one page memo that is very precise and very mm. academically rich, but very clear and then give that to a politician or a decision maker. And so we try to train students up in those sorts of um, abilities and skills by giving them all the sorts of um, assignments and um, outputs that they might need to one day do in, in the workforce. Yeah, I've definitely had to do all these types of assignments and I like that there's diversity in what I have to do because it means that every few weeks when I do have a new assignment, it's a new challenge and it means I can use my brain in a different way. So I really enjoy the fact that Security Studies has these different types of assignments. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this morning. We will be having another conversation with Dr. Drugan again this afternoon covering similar questions, so feel free to come back to that if you wanted to. If you felt like your question wasn't answered in this Q&A session, there is a chat button at the bottom left hand side of your screen. So feel free to send those questions in there and our student ambassadors and academic advisors will be giving you guys answers to those. If you wanted to head back to the main central studio, that's where you can find more information about the double degree options that you could be doing with security studies. From this page, there's also a competition tab. So I would highly encourage you guys to have a look at the competitions we have running at Macquarie today. There's some awesome prizes up for grabs. The next session we have is at 11.30 for criminology. So feel free to come back to that if you wanted to. Other than that, that's it from us this morning, but have a good open